Um, I'm going to start with the key relationships because this is really what's driving the plan. Uh, it just so happens that one of the most prominent trail systems in New England called the Minuteman Trail leads on a former railway embankment right to the doorstep of this site, a stone's throw, a very long stone's throw, but a stone's throw from the Charles River. And so the idea of making this connection to the river became a driver of the plan. Something that's a public purpose that might have been imposed on the developer actually was seen for all the reasons I was describing before as an enormous benefit. And in fact, it generated a plan where the green system building up from the river actually became the spine of the development proposal following the trail system on a linear trajectory to the river, but also introducing a whole series of perpendicular connections that tied back into East Cambridge, to Charlestown, and to downtown Boston, with a series of green spaces that were actually like a sundial, tracking the progress of the sun across the site and ensuring that every development parcel had access to the sun. So these, again, everything is about serving multi-purposes and working with multidisciplinary teams sharing information. So one of the ways of getting these parks to do more than just being parks is they actually contain constructed wetlands, they are stormwater reservoirs, and they enabled us working with a combination of ecologists and civil engineers to radically reduce the size of pipes conveying stormwater into the Charles River. So in every case, I'm going to mention some of these relationships, such as that one. Some of them will be implied, but in every case, it requires, requires very complex information sharing among people working in different disciplines, where the big eureka moments or aha moments come when you can find things that solve two or three problems at once and actually have a tremendous payoff. So in this case, having these parks actually enabled the developer to take what was a derelict industrial site and create an incredibly attractive feature right in the heart of the site. If it only were a park, it would have been hard to justify financially. But because it was doing more things, it started to make sense. So this, in fact, gave rise to the plan that you see here. Now, a common theme in all of these that I'm sure uh, many of you deal with all the time is just this very simple thing here of collaging onto current reality uh, something new and showing what the relationships are. And I'm, I, I have lots of flyovers that I could show you in the interest of time. I'm not going to do that. But simply to say that the skill in being able to portray that and especially introducing a time dimension actually showing this not as I'm doing here as one end state but how this would actually come about over time through a sequencing of events is really important. So these are the first two buildings which were the subject of design competitions and a portion of the park. And this was the site actually, um, this, is, this is quite, the buildings are occupied now, the park is built. So this was quite some time ago. This is in the early construction. Not surprisingly, the developer elected to build the park first as a vehicle for selling the subsequent phases of the development rather than waiting. Now I'm going to shift across the river and up at the top of the slide you actually see North Point, uh, the project that I just showed you. So we've crossed the river into Boston, one of the big, biggest events, biggest civil engineering projects ever to occur in a city, the Big Dig in Boston, which if you combine the cleanup of the harbor and the cleanup of the Charles River with the Big Dig itself was a $17 billion effort uh, funded largely by the US federal government with some state support. And I was approached by Mayor Tom Menino after the Big Dig was uh, nearing completion with the question, how can I as the mayor of Boston actually leverage this opportunity? How can I get more out of it? There is a project which was done, it had contract limits, it's now completing itself, it obviously will have benefits for the city, how can I expand those benefits? So here you see um, in terms of the project itself, uh, the removal of the central artery that was built in 1950, uh, the elevated expressway releasing 
these parcels of land, about half of which uh, became parks and the other uh, half are reserved uh, as building sites. In terms of the world in motion, uh, one of the first things we did, and I was working with the staff at the Boston Redevelopment Authority very closely on this, is to portray, as we always like to do, what is the context for this? What is going on around it? We're not just dealing with a snapshot in time. We're dealing with a moving picture, and there are powerful events surrounding this task or undertaking that we're embarking on and what's basically happening in Boston, as has happened in Vancouver and in cities all around the world, is you're having a fairly massive increase in residential population in the heart of the city, along with a much greater mix of uses, new employment, recreation, entertainment, cultural uses. So everything you see here in the reddish color are new projects that are planned uh, and in many cases underway. Some of them have been built since um, this drawing was prepared. So that this is a very understanding as context what all those things consist of, how they're happening, the rate of the change, uh, and portraying that in real time as a way of understanding what comes next becomes really important. This is a quick before and after snapshot. I'll just draw your attention to the upper right-hand corner there where you see the central artery in all its glory. Um, it's hard to imagine that just a couple of generations ago we had people who thought it was appropriate to do this in the heart of cities, but we're busy rectifying these mistakes. We have a whole generation of massive infrastructure that's reached the end of its life and is now being replaced with a new kind of infrastructure emphasizing public transit, walking, cycling, uh, and handling uh, vehicles in a very different way. This is the North End Park designed by Catherine Gustafson in Seattle. Uh, it is now built, and it's uh, an absolutely beautiful park. So this, this was the, when I had been at this for about six weeks, I went back to the mayor, uh, having done this hand-drawn sketch, and what I was showing him was, you can see in the yellow and green, the actual, what's called the Rose Kennedy Greenway, the footprint of the Big Dig. But I also drew on this all the surrounding areas in the reddish color where there was intensive life and activity in the surrounding areas. And this became the genesis of something called the Crossroads Project, which was about taking the energy, the initiative, the effort that had gone into the Big Dig and actually extending it over a larger territory. So this, this is the project itself, and it was about creating a web of connections that would link neighborhood to neighborhood, neighborhoods to the harbor, to the Charles River, to each other, across the Big Dig. So it's Causeway, which is right by North Station. It's Hanover and Salem, which go into the great historic North End neighborhood. It's State Street and Broad Street going out to the end of Long Wharf. Um, it's a series of streets linking into South Boston, Congress, Summer, and uh, Neyland, um, and then a number of streets connecting Chinatown and the Leather District. Each one of these has a particular character, and it became a capital program phased over a number of years, which is currently underway, um, approximately six miles in length when you total up all these streets. There were 12 of them, and they are with a relatively minor expenditure on top of the huge expenditure in the Big Dig, uh, making an enormous difference. Now, I'm going to look at different aspects. There are always many ways to draw the drawing and many different kinds of information to understand. So on the left is what we call the identity pizza. Boston is famous for being a somewhat tribal city where the different ethnic groups, the Irish, the Italians, the Yankees, as they refer to them, uh, each were in their own neighborhoods, and the elevated artery only exacerbated the social separation. What has happened with the expressway coming down is that a new common ground has been forged that's starting to overcome these barriers between the different social groups, and the crossroads was intended to actually accelerate that process.